continue on in our theme of Stranger Places, and as we think about today's message, I want to have you take inventory of where you are now. What kind of strange place are you in now? Is it a new place? Is it an unexpected place? A lonely place? A place of suffering or trial? What kind of strange place are you in now? And I want to also ask, in that place that you're in, what are you believing God for? And that's really the question that I want to bring to us today. What are you believing God for in the place that you are in? We've been considering Hebrews 11, 13 through 16. I'm going to read it once again. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they're looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And the theme has been faith will lead us into stranger places. I'm going to go back and have just a brief history lesson for you today on the Church of the Nazarene. You know, the Church of the Nazarene, about 120 years old. I, you know, maybe we've had a celebration recently with a, a big year marker, but just so you know, about 120 years old. The Church of the Nazarene started during the holiness movement, and especially if you're younger today, you go, what is even a holiness movement? Um, but the whole idea was people who were not wanting to be like everybody else was being in society, people who wanted to be holy uh, with a WH uh, entirely set aside to God. And this denomination was a collection of denominations that were looking for reform in denominations they were leaving. They were looking for something more. It, it was a holiness movement. They especially had the poor and disenfranchised in mind when this denomination began. They were mindful of the Great Commission. They wanted to reach people for Christ. They were desperate to reach people for Christ. There was a great Pentecostal influence. And you say, I don't, another word, I don't know exactly what you mean, but they just believed God could do everything that God was doing back in the day. They believed in the Holy Spirit unleashed. If George were here, he'd love this one, the Holy Ghost power. And they were looking for revival. That's the roots of the Nazarene denomination. And if we look at Hebrews chapter 11 and these verses as we're considering people like Abraham and Sarah and Noah and Enoch and Abel, all, it's, the scripture says all these people were living by faith. They were sold out to the point where they had kind of turned in their citizen card and said, I'm all in for heaven. And they admitted that they were foreigners and strangers on the earth. They refused to be mindful of the place that they had been at one point comfortable with because they were seeking a heavenly country. In Hebrews 11 and verse 6 it says, and without faith it's impossible to please God. It's a difficult one because sometimes I go, my faith is just not where I want it to be. But the scripture says, without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Which has pretty much been the theme of prayer today, hasn't it? Earnestly seeking him. When the disciples, who had left everything to follow Jesus, when the disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith, he said, all you need is the faith the size of a mustard seed. And great things will happen. Mountains will be moved, trees will be uprooted. All you need is a tiny amount of faith.
I know this is the second time in six weeks that I've referred to Facebook, so have mercy on me. I'm not a slave to Facebook. Uh, but I do like a feature in Facebook, and that is as there have been environmental incidents especially, but more than just that, uh, violence incidents, etc., in different regions and places around the world, you have the opportunity as people get concerned about you who might not be right with you, that they might wonder if you're safe. Um, and, and the flooding that happened in the Carolinas and the violence that happened in in, uh, in El Paso, in um, the situations that have occurred around the world, you have an opportunity as people get concerned to mark yourself safe. I have a friend named Brad. Uh, my friends Brad and Lynn live in Houston where a couple of years ago, Hurricane Harvey laid waste to the fourth largest city in the US. Brad was safe and in a city, uh, uh, an enormous city, that turned into a city of islands, meaning there, water was, was everywhere and, and it crept up so that you know, entire areas were just submerged and you had to head for the high grounds and, and, and maybe several square blocks of area, you, you found high ground, but all around nobody could get to you. There were no roads that were accessible. There was, it was a very bad situation. Brad found himself in a place where he was safe. He was above the water level. And he could have said, man, I've got a lot of chips in the pantry and I can, I can binge Netflix if ever there was a time, now is the time. He could have done that. And instead, Brad began to think about all of the thousands upon thousands of people who were stranded. You could call 911 all day, but those people are all dispatched. So he began to get on websites where he could find people who said, I, I'm here and uh, no one's going to be able to reach me and I'm a nervous as to whether or not I'm going to even make it through this. And Brad got involved with a citizens volunteer rescue group searching the internet to find people who were stranded and reports of those people who were missing. And he connected with rescuers who found any number of people. I mean, they, they, they got to all kinds of people, but one story especially comes to mind for Brad, and that is um, the hurricane hit on a Friday, and that night a security guard went into work on a night that he wasn't even scheduled just to make sure that a couple fellow security guards were, were okay and going to make it through, and they didn't show up for work. And so this man who was not even scheduled to work found himself alone and as the hurricane passed through there was nowhere to go no one to contact for help and somebody was able to see his plea on a website and my friend Brad got involved it happened on a Friday night no food no clean water and Saturday passed and Sunday passed, and on Monday, Brad and a few other people finally connected with this gentleman. No food, no water, no contact with anybody since Friday night. And they stayed in contact with him, and they tried to find people, and you know, people had driven in from Oklahoma and Louisiana and all of these other cities and states where, where maybe they could drive and have a boat to go try to help somebody. And they finally got to a rescuer. And on Tuesday morning, Terry began to say to people he could speak with, I know I'm not going to make it. Thank you for trying. And he had just about given up hope when they located somebody who had a boat. And on Tuesday, they rescued Terry. I wondered today how you would mark yourself spiritually. Maybe the storms of life, maybe regrets of behavior, maybe the distance you can feel between yourself and God have put you in a bad place. Maybe today you're in need of rescue. Hebrews 12, 2 says this, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, 
the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Today, if you find yourself in a place where you can't say, yep, I'm good with God, we want to point you to Christ. The Bible says he's the author of our faith. You say, I just, I don't feel like I've ever even had any faith. He's the author. We're going to point you to Jesus. Well, I've had faith, but I've, I've backslidden. I've left. I've faded. Uh, the scripture says he's the finisher of your faith. And today we want to point you to Jesus. Maybe today you can mark yourself safe, but the place that you're in is so strange, you're, you're wondering how you're going to be able to make it. And here I turn us to a scripture in Hebrews chapter 10, and it says this, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And listen, we can go line by line through this, but basically what this scripture is saying is, now is the time to come into the presence of Christ. The way is wide open. In our Bible study on Wednesday, we were thinking about how the faith of those who have gone before us is not made perfect without our faith as well. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 12. And we, we kind of wrestled with that one. And in many ways, those who have gone before us, who we admire their faith, never got, while they were living on this earth, an opportunity to know the Messiah. And we have had opportunity after opportunity. And maybe you've taken that opportunity, and may, maybe you name the name of Christ today, and you say, He is my Lord, and He is my Savior. And I just want to tell you this. As you find yourself in a strange place, please make sure that you're knowing that place is a place where you have full access to Jesus. Wait a minute, the place I'm in is a bad place. Well then, then in that case, get out of that place and trust Jesus to get you out of that place. But if you find yourself in a stranger place, a place of God's design where maybe trial, where maybe sanctification, where those kinds of things are taking place, now is the time to say, Lord, I'm with you. I'm with you in this place. I want to invite you into this place. If you're like my friend Brad, who could mark himself safe during that hurricane, but the storm is impacting you nonetheless, consider this verse, in he these verses in Hebrews chapter 10. Run to Jesus. Live by faith. And one more thing, like Brad was able to do, focus on others by joining the rescue efforts. Talk about the people that live in the area who, who don't know anything about anything spiritual. Today could be a day that we're focusing on others. I'm going to ask us to queue up um, the, the video. Let's not play it right this second, but let's be, be ready to do that, if, if you would. Last week I talked about how Josiah, king of the southern kingdom in Israel, began at 16 to seek the Lord. That's what the scripture says. This week I was considering Daniel who had been taken captive and removed from Israel and in a foreign land had his name changed. And at a certain point, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and said, listen, either my wise men can tell me what the dream was and explain it, 
or they're not really wise men. And if they're not able to do that, they're under the sentence of death. And Daniel did something incredible. He called his friends to seek the Lord with him. And of course, we know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He called them and he said, please join me in seeking the Lord regarding this dream. It doesn't matter your age. Today you can seek the Lord. I know you know that you can call others to your aid and say, please, please pray with me. And then I think about Jesus, who the scripture said frequently went apart to pray. You're welcome to do that too individual business with God. There's no formula. You say, well, how exactly should all that you enter into his presence? You say, Lord, I want to enter in your presence. In the movie Facing the Giants, Grant Taylor is a football coach at a Christian high school. He and his wife haven't been able to have children. His team, for years, has performed below average, and now his job is in jeopardy. The storms of life have him in a strange place. If we could play this clip, we get an idea of, in this movie, what Grant decides to do. my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God in whom I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be safe from my enemies. Lord Jesus, would you help me? I need you. Lord, I feel like there's giants of fear and failure just staring down at me, waiting to crush me. And I don't know how to beat him, Lord. I'm tired of being afraid. Or if you want me to do something else, show me. If you don't want me to have children, so be it. But you're my God. You're on the throne. You're going to have my hopes and my dreams. Or give me something. Show me something. If the Lord never gives us children, will you still love him? We live in a commercial world, don't we? Uh, thank you, by the way, for making all that work. I appreciate that. Uh, as I said, there's no formula in our approach to God, um, but I think we see some good examples here in, in great difficulty in wondering what God is doing and how he's going to get it done. We have somebody who returns to the scripture. He acknowledges God for who he is. And he just tells God, here's, here's what my issues are. And he tells it in a way that declares, this life is not centered around me. It's not based on what's going on in my economy. Lord, I want to be a part of what's going on in your economy. Whether I get what I want or not, I'm on board. I want to allow some time for prayer today, so I want to remind you of the question I asked earlier, a series of questions. Where, where are you now? 
Are you in a strange place? What are you believing God for? We ended our Bible study on Wednesday with that question, what are you believing God for? And we had, I don't know, eight or ten guys around a table. You get to know each other when you say, what are things that you're believing God for? And while everybody didn't open up with great detail, there were guys who I went, wow, there's a lot going on in that guy's life. There's a lot going on with that guy's family. There's a lot of need. That person's carrying concerns. And I wonder today what would happen with those concerns if God's people prayed. So I'm going to invite you, let's enter into God's presence. Maybe you need to go apart to pray. There are plenty of places here that you can do that. Maybe you want to seek him with others right where you are. And I loved what, what we did with Olivia. And if you didn't get a chance to do it, she's right there for you. I love the fact that Bob is here today. Maybe it's obvious you're going to go and, and pray with somebody. But I know this. We're also finding ourselves in stranger places. And I think if you're saying, is there somebody who would be willing to stand with me in that place where I'm believing God, and maybe it's been a long time, there's going to be someone who would do that. Please find somebody to pray with you. Find somebody to pray for. My mom asked the first time she was here before I got up, she said, what, what are those benches for? Those benches are for prayer. Today's service is going to conclude in prayer. I want you to take advantage. I want you to enter in. And Beth, if you would come and, and pray, I know that uh, it's uh, come and play. Did I say pray? Play. If you would come and play, I would appreciate that. I know sometimes when Beth is, is playing, um, we forget that Beth is even here. Um, so if you want to be someone that comes in 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 praise with Beth. There's maybe not a lot of room on the bench, but you can pray with her and for her as well. And listen, I know a lot of this is, is maybe not exactly what we're used to, but it is exactly the privilege that we have as God's people. So I'm going to conclude now, um, again, challenging you to go pray for someone, to go pray with someone. And I'm going to head right down here to pray myself. Let's take advantage of it. Lord bless you.